What if artificial intelligence had the power to transform the world? Two simple letters that could inspire action, accelerate innovation, and transform lives. The better question becomes, how can AI be used to empower you and your business to drive positive change in local communities all around the world? What really struck me in the last few years is just how much faster an enterprise can get really significant business outcomes with artificial intelligence compared to how long it used to take and how much time and how much data. All of those things are so much shortened and so much accelerated now compared to just not very many years ago. If the internet is the chassis for digital transformation, I think of AI as going to be the grease. It's going to help make smart factories smarter. It's going to help make smart houses smarter, smart cars smarter, intelligent traffic systems smarter. It's generally just going to increase the ability to share information. AI plays a huge role in how we deliver services and think about how to leverage technology for services and solutions that are delivered on behalf of the communities we serve. It's not about technology, it's about helping people. When companies and government agencies start to look at what role AI plays in their organization, I think they're starting to see how voice is what's next. For us, the use of artificial intelligence has been of great success because it allows us to serve and answer questions from customers in any time of the day. Optimizing operations, how employees work with driving tremendous amounts of efficiency, enabling how new products work and creating new lines of revenue. And then it's about how it can help employees be safer at work, which is always a top priority for manufacturers. AI can be used in so many different ways that I just think it's the beginning of a lot of our work in this area. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg, I guess you could say. Artificial intelligence is already around us all day. Every time you speak into your mobile device to type a text message, every time you speak to a voice assistant to ask for information while you're on the go. These things are part of our lives, and it's great to see how the technology not only enables us to use it, but to also apply it to our business challenges, regardless of what industry you're in or what position you hold. The largest barrier for us really comes down to money, like with any company or any government. And I think it's just being able to prioritize that with the need. and. Embracing kind of what we consider to be in government advanced technology in this way is just something where we've been able to do things that I think people would have never imagined government would do. For years and years and years, companies have been cutting costs in order to compete and remain healthy. And doing more with less has been standard mode of operation. But with AI, I'm seeing people embracing it extensively, reaching out and asking for more help on how they can use it. Yes, we're going to a much more machinery, equipment-driven society where, where, where machines are going to be doing a lot more for us. But in the end, if we don't have people who are trained and skilled, that's a resource that's going to hold us back. There's broad applicability for artificial intelligence across financial services. Everything from sort of on the inbound side where people are asking for a quote for insurance or for a mortgage, using artificial to model the application process and be able to get people a response immediately. In the case of Principal International, they were able to use artificial intelligence to automate the responses to routine queries in a crunch time when lots of people really wanted to get immediate access to their financial information. In the first time also in the use of artificial intelligence, we thought that could lead us to replace some collaborators, not changing them from one responsible to others. But the thing that has happened is that we have been able to serve more numbers of customers instead of replacing the collaborators that, that were, for example, answering in the in customer service. So that has been a, a little surprise in the use 
of the artificial intelligence. Because of the pandemic that everyone is facing, what we have seen is a lot of people is trying to steal personal information. We are dealing with pensions. We are dealing with people. We have to take care about financial wellness. We were able to create a machine learning algorithm that is running all the time. And as soon as the algorithm detects and a suspicious transaction, it will raise a flag and eventually is gonna cancel the transaction that that customer is trying to do with us. And it is basically our first line of defense trying to avoid all these kind of attacks. When COVID began, we would get a flood of calls and inquiries, whether they were email or phone calls from the public with questions. How do we access money for our business? How do we access information to go get testing? Early on, this was really challenging just with the volume of questions that were coming in and just recognizing how much information we were really needing to get out to the public. So in terms of artificial intelligence, we were just dabbling and beginning, uh, I'd say, working in that area by having smart kind of cameras along some of the roadways we had uh, to make things safer for the public. With COVID occurring, uh, a lot of that work advanced. So at the beginning of March, we launched our call center here for King County. At the time, because we had to move so quickly, they were paper-based assessment forms. It was very clear that we needed to have a better communication channel with the public. King County came to Microsoft and they have a call center that is staffed by nurses. And what they were seeing was that the calls that they were receiving were very simplistic questions. You know, what are the symptoms of the coronavirus? Or uh, do I have to wear a mask? Things like that. And the nurses really needed to be spending their time focused on answering the real deep medical questions. They thought they needed a big IT investment and lots of time before they could start an AI. And then they learned that with, for example, the Xamo platform, all they needed to do was have the content that they wanted to share with the public, just the questions and the answers, literally a two column spreadsheet. And with that, they were able to have that bot get built and deployed within two days. Another example is I have a customer who's used AI to be able to have persons who are disabled or special needs. And these people have been extraordinarily productive. They've already started hiring persons as an example that have Down syndrome to be able to pick stock. And they've been able to do it with near peer parity from those who didn't have AI. So it's quite impactful and they've partnered with organizations to help better scale that and they give that technology away for free. The way we can help, Maypie can help, is we can actually help the manufacturers who, who are interested in training workers so that they're more capable of actually working in a high tech environment, which is what manufacturing now is. It's, advanced manufacturing is a, a very highly technologically driven area. So what we can do is we can actually help bring the manufacturers together with the schools and we can actually provide forums for manufacturers to share with each other how are we actually working with the schools in these regions in order to help the students actually get the skills necessary to work in a, an advanced AI-driven environment. Seamless government is so important because the public doesn't care about which government entity is providing information. They want information now. We work with other local jurisdictions where we share solutions because once it's invented, it's free to any other government entity to use. Something like the chatbot allows us to service the public better, quicker, more effectively, more efficiently. Like somebody can go in in the middle of the night and get the answers and information that they need versus a standard kind of business hour. So this type of tool is such a benefit for the public, for the government services that we offer, for information that is you know, life or death in some cases for people to have access to. So I think it's a really exciting time for artificial intelligence. It's already around us, and yet it's become so much more accessible 
that it can really enrich our lives in a lot of exciting ways. There are a lot of other ways of using artificial intelligence. There are a lot of, of more uses in the company that we have to explore. And I think as people are seeing artificial intelligence not as a thing that it seems to be of other world, or <laughs> I think now in more areas of the company, it will be used. No doubts that every single morning I wake up and I think on what can I do today to improve my society, to improve my company, and of course, to learn something new. That's what ignites me every single morning. So I'm doing something that will impact my society because all the artificial intelligence initiatives, uh, machine learning, data, is gonna allow me to improve the relationship that I got with my customer. If I am doing something, just at least for one customer, I'm pretty sure that that's going to have an impact on the society. Technology and AI is going to increase our standard of living. It already is. We're surrounded by it. It's in our navigation systems. It's in our weather forecasting. It's in the reason why you're able to order things online. So once it really is incorporated into the manufacturing sector in terms of the whole value chain, I think it's going to actually really elevate the standard of living in, in this country and around the world. When it comes to the future, I see AI investments all around me, not just by us, but many, many, many companies, and where AI can make our jobs easier, our lives easier, us healthier, safer. AI gives me hope, and it gives my customers hope. And I believe Microsoft is the leader in this space. We're putting people first, and then we're putting the technology second, which is the way I believe we need to lead forward. And I think it's just the start of use of AI. You know, in speaking with several of the staff at Microsoft, they were saying that we were one of the first to begin incorporating AI in government use. And, you know, being an innovative county in that way, again, it's probably only the beginning. There are so many other types of uses that I think we may have not even thought of. I think thinking through how we can best help people or serve people would be a really driving force to understand um, what the future could look like. AI can and will change society for the better. In times of uncertainty, AI shines a powerful guiding light, helping organizations navigate and adapt to this new reality by managing through recovery with resilience and a plan for the future. A future aligned with empathetic business leaders who understand the importance of continuity and who encourage innovation and the need to create lasting change. Two simple letters that are empowering what's possible, enabling each of us to live, work, and connect in more meaningful and engaging ways every day. Are you ready to achieve more? AI awaits.